Thank you for visiting the Garden Fellowship page. We're a messianic fellowship in North Central Arkansas in the beautiful Ozark Mountains where we exalt Yahweh, desire to walk as Yeshua walked. I want to give you a brief introduction to our fellowship, share about our worship services, and how we're living out the gospel of the kingdom. Father God's doing something so awesome in the earth in these days and the times in which we live. He's calling out believers to an understanding of Yeshua and his original plan and intent as it was created in the garden from the beginning. So when Yeshua says things like, I am the true vine and my father's the husbandman, or like in John 12, 24, where it says, except a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it bides alone. But if it dies, it'll bring forth much fruit. Or Yeshua is teaching about a parable of a sower or a field. He's using garden languages, and that's not just because in times of antiquity they were all gardeners. No, God's original plan and intent was set up agriculturally based on seasons, based on cycles, which is how prophecy works as well. But even more importantly, from the beginning, God, El Shaddai, created man and woman, and he makes a garden, and he put him in it to tend and protect. It was in that garden that he walked with them in the cool of the day. That original word in the Hebrew for cool is rock, the word for spirit. God desired to walk with us. God desired to walk with the man and woman in the spirit. So when we study in the New Testament, we see things like walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh or a few verses later. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and so on. We're following garden principles from the beginning. Why is that? In Isaiah 46, 10, it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times of things that were not yet done. So if we want to understand what's going to happen at the end of time, and a lot of people are really excited about biblical prophecy, we have to know what's at the beginning. How can a student learn algebra or advanced mathematics without first understanding basics like addition, subtraction, and multiplication? That's what happens with a lot of us as Christians or a lot of us as believers. We're starting three quarters of the way through the book and don't always know how those words are really used in the original, their original intent and meaning, so they're confusing later on in the book. None of us pick up a book three quarters of the way through and start reading. So what happens when we get rooted in Torah foundation, we study the prophets and the Psalms, we understand the New Testament in the context, understand the life of Messiah Yeshua so much better in even more difficult books like Revelation and the prophetic writings. Look at Luke 24. In verses 44 through 46, he said, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. In verse 45, then opened he their understanding. That's what we want is that, that the Lord would open up our understanding that we might understand what the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. Yes, from what we call the Old Testament, the Tanakh, Yeshua taught what was written 500 to 1500 years before his birth that he was going to die, be buried, and resurrect on the third day. Can you teach that from the Old Testament? Yeshua taught them it was going to happen before it happened. That's how prophecy works. At the Garden Fellowship, we study scripture from Genesis to Revelation, believing every word, holding to every word, and desiring to live out the whole counsel of God. In the beginning, God planted truth in the garden, and everything throughout the rest of the Bible has grown from there. How does this affect our worship and study at the Garden Fellowship? As an example, have you ever noticed all the sevens in the Bible? Well, we meet on the seventh day of the week for worship and keep the seven feasts of Yahweh. Why? Because we're Seventh-day Adventists or Jewish? No, because the number seven is in the Bible all over the place. There's a video teaching on the site that goes much further into this. But how many days of creation are there? Yes, seven, culminating on the seventh day as a day not of creating, but of rest and enjoyment of what has been created. That's what we do here in worship on the seventh day, Shabbat. There are seven biblical feasts bookended by seven-day remembrances in the spring and fall, unleavened bread, Sukkot. The seven days of creation in Genesis are bookended by the seven days of recreating in the book of Revelation. There's the new heaven, 
you see all these in chapters 21 and 22. There's the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, the new nations, the new river, the new tree of life, the new throne. The seven Moadim, or feasts, are punctuated by Sukkot, which is the seventh day of creation, or the millennium, where we experience Yah's intended fellowship that's seen now through a glass dimly. So keeping the weekly Shabbat and the feasts of our Heavenly Father are a rehearsal for eternity, plus a lot more. At the Garden Fellowship, we study the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, believing every word, holding to every word, and desiring to live out the whole counsel of God. In the beginning, God planted truth in the garden, and everything through the rest of the Bible has grown from there. So please join us at the Garden Fellowship as we understand God's plan, Yeshua's life and mission, and end-time events from beginning to end. We're planted and growing closer and closer to the Lord God each day. So we hope you'll join us at the Garden Fellowship.